Hi and welcome back and it took another three months for me to get back to my YouTube channel and again it was not planned. I'll talk about that later I want to talk about what this video is about. This is a new pad of paper that I got. It's a Canson pad. It's an A3 and that's why it's so huge. It doesn't really fit my filming area well. Um, it's drawing paper. It is 224 GSM, which is pretty good for uh, drawing paper, fine grain. It's called Grain. Grain. I'm not good with French. And it's a natural white. And the reason why we got this was because I got a lot really a lot of colored pencils that I want to use and preferably use up so that in X amount of time that is not really a set date that I will no longer have so many colored pencils only the very few brands that I enjoy the most maybe two or three types and uh, I do have some uh, drawing paper that I quite enjoy. That is from from uh, Clefontaine. It's the one that is called Cray On, uh, and it's uh, it's really good. It's 160 GSM paper, but I will run out of that. I don't have all that much left of that. So I went hunting for other types of drawing paper and I came across this on Amazon and I uh, thought, well, if I should say anything negative about the Cray on paper, it would be that it was maybe a little bit thin for colored pencils because uh, the thinner it is, the, the easier it is to, to ruin the, the grain of the paper. And before anybody writes in the comment section, oh, use uh, watercolor paper. I don't like drawing on watercolor paper. That's just how it is. I don't use uh, solvents for colored pencils. I really hate turpentines. And yes, you can get odorless ones, but they are just as toxic and fume just as bad as the ones that stink. You're just uh, not getting a warning. You're just inhaling stuff you shouldn't inhale anyways. So, um, just, no, <laughs> not, not really going there. I use a little bit sometimes, but uh, I really don't like it. So, yeah, A3, and I bought an A3, there's 30 sheets in here, and I don't really draw on A3, that is way beyond my patience to fill a whole A3 page with an intricate drawing. But, I got a... We call it paper gallo, I think. Um, no, it's not a gallo. Anyways, I can cut it. I got a paper cutting tool here in the back. And if I cut this up in A5, which is more the size I work in, I get 120 sheets of A5 paper for 20 euros or so. So um, I'll pause the camera and then I'll cut a piece out of this, uh, cut it into A5s and we'll talk about it then. So we got it down to a much more manageable, manageable size and I got four sheets of A5 from an A3. So let's put one to the one side. It feels okay, it will set fine grain on the, on the front there. Um, it is, it has a bit of texture, so I like that. And it feels like one side has a little more texture than the other, which is good. Good, so um, what I bought these for are pencil drawings of any kind. Maybe also a little pastel and maybe a little charcoal. Here I got a set of Academy Durant Academy pencils, the 36 set. This was actually a 
mishap that I got these. I thought I had bought their watercolor pencils, but it wasn't. And I didn't really bother, because I was okay with trying these out. Now, these are... Lots of people hate them, <laughs> because they're hard. Just like their uh, artist pencils are hard. And I don't mind that. I actually quite like harder pencils. And my thought was that if I could uh, could use these on that paper, then uh, I kind of assume that any other color pencil will go on here quite nicely. Um, I don't want to talk too much about the pencils because I know they have changed the, the color selection since. And um, they are coming out with some other student grade pencils that uh, seems to be more to the average person's liking. But uh, I am um, going to try a few colors. I'm not sure I'm going to draw anything because I want to test out a few mediums in this slice of paper. So here's a black. And yes, uh, I should pull in the camera maybe it's more. Uh, we need the focus button for this, come on. Focus, oh, and I got a new boom arm for my camera. It's, uh, it's all a little awkward here today, I'm sorry. Try the order oh, focus. Okay. I hope you can see that that yes, the the grain of the paper shows on on here, and it doesn't bother me because that just means that the paper can take more layers. What I want to talk about in terms of colored pencils and hard colored pencils in particular, people hate them because they don't give off a lot of color in the first pass. So people tend to push harder to get some color. And when you push hard on any color pencil, that being softer or hard, you flatten the tooth of the paper and you, it's called burnishing. And after you have burnished the paper and flattened it, it gets shiny and it will not take a lot of color more after that. So people get really annoyed with these. The trick with hard pencils is to build up a lot of thin layers and build up your intensity. It takes more time than if you have some soft pencils that give off a lot of color in the first pass, but these also give you a lot of control. So if you don't, if you make a little mistake here and there, you can some often corrected in a subsequent layer you can draw a word and stuff so if if you for instance accidentally pick up a wrong color and you go over it uh, once or twice and go oops that was not quite what i wanted if you you can usually cover it up with some other layers with whatever color you did mean to use now these doesn't blend fantastic and there's more wax in these than the professional pencils. So you get to to a point where it won't take so many more layers. But I quite like the, the feel of the paper here. With these pencils you have to kind of get to, to where you want to be fairly quickly and it's not just this paper it's any paper. No, that's okay. I got some uh, polychromos here. It's just a random grab in my my jar over there. So here we got a what? Indie dark indigo. Let's try that. Let's put some green on top of that. Polychromos just builds and builds and builds and builds. That's what I really like about them. And 
And yes, I am aware of blenders as well. And <laughs> guess what? I don't like those either. Uh, I think they tend to... Actually... Just lift off the colors. And or burnish the paper. In a way that I don't like. So, let's try and put it down in small circles instead of lines. See if we can cover it up. With some, some sharp pencils and some small strokes, you can actually cover the all the little holes in the paper, or from the paper. Just takes a few more layers than you would if you used some kind of turpentine. Oops. It's not the prettiest example of anything, I know. Today I'm not trying to make a drawing. So, to get back to why I've been away for so long. Um, yeah, it has nothing to do with creativity. It's a lot to do with life. And um, So, I used to have my all my art stuff in the living room, in a corner of the living room. And um, yeah, as time progressed, it took up more and more room. And I'm not a very orderly and organized person. So it was my art mess over in the corner. And I hated when people came over and they wanted to, they didn't want to talk about my art. They want to discuss why I needed hundred some odd markers and all that paper. Why? Why do you need so much paper? And it was just the usual, why are you such a mess discussion? And I, I hated that. And another thing is, I would like to try and do some more oil paintings. But the last time I did oil painting, I had a week long, or if not more, battle with my cats um, about not sitting on my oil paintings that was standing and lying around drying and um, yeah so in another part of the house we had a guest room where the bed for that guest room was too big for the room it was a, a king size bed for pairs that might come over or couples that might come over to visit we got family from far away but they don't visit all that often and we were talking about the room was not very nice for having guests in and um, we could maybe better fit the guest bed where my work desk was and then I could get the little room as an art studio and that sounds quite simple right J furniture in and furniture out and art stuff in one place and that's just where they go except that in said room there was this uh, really, really grotty, old, disgusting carpet. It was here before we moved in here, and we lived here for 15 years. And that's happened things on that carpet that a carpet should never see. Cats, birds, in combination, for instance. So it was it was disgusting and it was worn out and we wanted to get rid of it and there was nothing nice underneath it um, at all so we couldn't just tear it out and say okay so we'll just have this nice floor no so we had no flooring put in <laughs> and then I could move in and uh, then we liked this flooring so much that we ended up actually changing the floors in most of the house so we've been emptying out one room at a time and having new floors put in and uh, yeah that has taken a lot of time but uh, I'm actually at a place where I got my studio set up I got a new computer for making videos and I got lights and whatnot you might have seen some of the light in the reflection of the plastic 
um, then I started wanting to to do videos again and uh, yeah I had long story short I had software issues with my software and software licensing and stuff so um, I'm a little confined here because now I had to get my laptop out again that I used to film on it's over there and it, over there is my keyboard mouse and screen for the other computer which is fortunately off my desk but it kind of limits my desk space um, I'm a little stubborn I don't want to pay for the same the software license twice just because I changed my computer and um, I'm quite sure that the terms of service is not the same as when I signed up for a SID license so we're having a little bit of a battle about that and because I do not want to promote the company that made my video editing software I'm not name naming their name they are getting no promotion for me anyways back to the paper so um, here I got some black wing pencils that I bought and I tried and I like them, they're, they're, they're okay. So let's try these on here. And again, it, it is a grainy paper and I really don't mind that. I think it has a quite a classic look if, if you use grainy paper. If you disagree, you should bet get smooth paper. There, there's benefits and drawbacks to anything. Uh, it's, it's a personal choice. I prefer grainy paper. So I'm not good at drawing eyes. It's, it could be one thing I could aim for in the coming years to get better at human eyes. I taste the pencil really good. Allows some smudging, but not too much. That's good. Yeah. And if anybody wants to know what I think about the Blackwing, they're good pencils. <laughs> I just think that they're a bit overpriced. Um, that's that's all. I, I don't think they're better or worse than the good art grade pencils. These are not even sold as art grade pencils. They are sold as writing pencils by and large. Let's try the black one here. The blackest of the black. But they're nice and they definitely work as, as, as drawing pencils. And yeah, they're expensive. I bought these uh, open stock and they cost uh, two or three euros each and it was not too bad. A big box of 12 is a little more of a screamer to, to pay for it. Is, ah, a little too, too much. So I'd say this is a personal choice if you would like a grainy paper like this. But it grips onto the the pencils well enough and as I said I think it's a very classic look also got some Faber-Castell um, polychromous hard pastel sticks could maybe try and combine this very pink for for a skin tone. Try it on its own over here. Yeah, I got graphite on my fingers, so everything gets turns grey. Put some of the pink hair. <laughs> I never got a full set of these, I just bought a handful of stock at some point and uh, even though I like them I just don't draw much with pastels I have to admit. 
but they are nice if if you like pastel sticks I, I can recommend these these are not really soft pastels they are harder they, they, they are quite firm and they give off quite accurate lines Sorry, I'm not used to have the camera so close. Yeah, I think this is quite nice paper. Uh, we will get along just fine. I want one more thing. I got a little bit of watercolor here. I don't expect it to be super good for watercolors, but sometimes I like to do a little line and wash stuff. So, at least a little bit of wet and dry. And yeah, the polychromos pastels you can lift a bit with water. If you don't want to smudge them on your hand, you can actually move them with a bit of water. But it doesn't give the same effect as if you if you rub them. No, I don't want to do that. It seems to take water kind of okay. It's also fairly heavy paper, so it should uh, should do that. bad not too bad so this is kind of a first impression I, I have to do a video where I, I use it probably without killing it can actually it works quite okay with a wet medium as well. I suspect it could be okay with watercolor pencils. I didn't take out any for today's trial. But if it works with pencils and it works with water, it should be okay for watercolor pencils. So yeah, that's one of the cancelled sick ring. I think that is quite okay. This one here. Oh, let's get the camera out again. So, um, first impression, quite okay. It, um, it was kind of what I expected. So, um, thank you all for watching, and I'll try and do more videos. I got a lot of stuff I had planned to do, and I had tried to do, and I tried to film it, and tried to edit it, and then the editor said, "No, you have to pay again." Uh, so, let's see. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and all the YouTube stuff. See ya.